Officer Wiley's line is still busy. You got any more horses up there, trot them out. No. No, absolutely not. I will not be a party to the scheme. And I told you what I'd do if you didn't. Yes, I'll go to the police. Mary? Mary! I'm leaving. You can go as soon as you're finished correlating those motivational stimulus data. Yes, Professor. Good night. Hello? Professor Wiley? No, I'm sorry, he isn't here. Who's calling, please? Never mind. A friend. Where can I reach a professor? It's a matter of life or death. But he just left a few minutes ago. Find him. Get him back to his office. Tell him not to move. His life is in danger. Another challenge for the Green Hornet, his aide Cato, and their rolling arsenal, the Black Beauty. On police records, a wanted criminal, the Green Hornet is really Britt Reed, owner-publisher of the Daily Sentinel. His dual identity, known only to his secretary and to the district attorney. And now, to protect the rights and lives of decent citizens, rides the Green Hornet. Well, in the first place, the police were wrong. Oh? Huh? Wiley wasn't killed by a bomb. His car was hit by an armored truck. An armored truck? Yeah, a huge thing, like a tank. Got away because Cato and I tried to stop and save Wiley, but... What were you doing there? Well, maybe this will explain. This is a call I received last night, 20 minutes before Wiley was killed. This machine records all my calls. Hello? Mr. Reed? Speaking. Mr. Reed, I can't tell you who I am, but you must believe what I'm going to tell you. You must contact Professor Thomas Wiley at Metropolitan University immediately. Warn him that his life is in danger. He is going to be... Harriet? 
Just a minute, Mr. Reed. Yes? Mr. Reed wants you in the tangerine room. Coming. Professor Wiley's going to be murdered tonight. Hello? Hello? No idea who the woman was? Only that her name was Harriet. Why do you suppose she called you instead of the police? Or Wiley himself, for that matter. Wait a minute. That man's voice in the background said that she was wanted in the tangerine room? Does that mean anything to you? Well, it could be the name of a restaurant, a nightclub, or a cocktail lounge. I've already checked that out. Drew a blank. But wait a minute, it could... Hey. That man's voice said that she was wanted by a Mr. Eden. There's a, uh, a health club called uh, the Vale of Eden. It's run by Peter Eden. It's become very fashionable, very chic, very expensive. Well, I don't see what that has to do. Well, the treatment rooms are designated by color. Mauve, Chartres. Tangerine. Yeah. Why not? Yes, Dorothy, dear? There's a man on the phone, Mr. Eden. He wants to speak to Harriet, but he won't say who he is. And? Well, he wants her home address and phone number. Peter Eden speaking. May I be of assistance? I'm terribly sorry, sir. We can't give out that sort of information about our employees. We must protect them from... <laughs> well, you understand. However, if you would like to leave your name and number, I'd be glad to give it to him. Would you please ask Harriet to step in here for a moment? All right. Cato, find out what time the Vale of Eden closes tonight. See you later, Frank. Honestly, Mr. Eden, I can't imagine who that man was that called me. Harriet, I've been noticing you the past few days, and you seem nervous and upset. Is there anything wrong? Anything that I should know about? Oh, Mr. Eden. Of course. You may go now. Dorothy, dear, please alert Cork and Johnny for a job tonight. Gun. Check. Hornet sting. Check. Let's roll, Cato.
Gabriel, Dennis. 71 Harding Road. Let me help her. Are you ready for this? Harriet Dennis once worked for the Sentinel two years ago as a switchboard operator. That may be the reason she called me about Wiley instead of going to the police. Get me Peter Eden at the Vale of Eden. Dorothy, dear, please show Miss Case around the women's section while I escort Mr. Reed around the men's diggings. Right this way, Miss Case. Allow me. It is indeed an honor for us to have the Sentinel interested in our little establishment, Mr. Reed. Thank you. The tangerine room is occupied, but let me show you the mauve room. Time's up, Miss Vane. Miss Vane. Miss Vane. Miss Vane. Come on, the police find out. Come on, the police. What? Oh. That's odd. I, I must have been dreaming. Such a strange dream. You know, I'm treasurer of the racetrack, and I handle millions of dollars every day, so there's lots of strain, there's nervous tension. And I come here two, three times a week, and I just get the knots and the kinks all worked out. There's nothing more soothing than the proper music. You ought to try it, Mr. Reed. After your recommendation, perhaps I shall, Mr. Cavanaugh. And I may ask you for a tip on the races. Tips are no better than the horses on the track. Nice meeting you, Mr. Reed. Nice to meet you, Cavanaugh. I'll see you on Thursday, sir. Mr. Cavanaugh. What was that he said about the proper music? We uh, personalize it for each of our patrons. Come, let me show you our music room. Ah, Miss Case, just in time to see our music room. This way. Now, as I was saying, we select the music to suit the overall personality and the psychological need of a given client varying it from time to time to accommodate the specific mood at treatment time. The music is piped in from here to the various rooms. What's this, Mr. Eden? Ah, that is what we call our dubbing machine. We use it to make any special tapes that we might need. It works in a... Dorothy, dear, we've left poor Mrs. Wilcox in the tub too long. Excuse us, will you? Surely. Make yourselves at home. It's a bit wild, isn't it? To say the least. How did Miss Case behave? Fine. Me too. Something. Something.
Bring him this. I've had the most wonderful idea. Why don't you take a treatment yourself and see how it works? Well, thanks, Mr. Eaton, but uh, I have an appointment. Some other time, perhaps. Miss Case, then. Oh, I don't think I could. Why don't you, Miss Case? Well... Excellent! Come along with me, Miss Case. Right this way, Miss Case. We'll take good care of her, Mr. Reed. Rit, darling! Hi, Vanessa. Have you been keeping yourself, darling? I haven't seen you for ages. Oh, you naughty boy, why didn't you call me? Well, you buy me a drink? Oh, no, no, I can't. I'm doing it all over the jewelers. I'm going to see the Catherine necklace. Have you seen it? No. Oh, well, have you got a car? I'm late. Oh, you can yes. drop me. Oh, darling, it's so good to see you again. I want to hear everything you've been doing. You'll call me? Yes. Promise? Of course. my last good shirt, the Green Hornet was behind it. Behind what? You mean you haven't heard? No, I've been working on the speech. Heard about what? Oliver's. What about Oliver's? They just had a necklace stolen, the famous Catherine necklace worth $250,000. Some dame heisted it. Some dame? Young, beautiful, real swanky gal, according to one of the clerks. What time was this? A few minutes after four this afternoon. But the strange part is, the dame had an appointment with Oliver and stole the necklace from under his nose right in his own office. Now Oliver says he can't remember a thing about it. Matter of fact, he denies any such dame was ever in his office. If the clerk Hartley hadn't seen... Britt, now where'd he go to? It doesn't make any sense, Britt. It just doesn't make any sense. Why on earth would I steal the Catherine necklace? If I wanted it that badly, I would have bought it. For a quarter of a million dollars. Are you forgetting that I'm worth at least 20 million? The fact remains, Vanessa, that you were in Oliver's this afternoon and... I wasn't. What? I haven't been in Oliver's in over two years. But I dropped you there, don't you remember? I picked you up at the Vale of Eden and... I don't know what you're talking about. I haven't set eyes on you in over three months. Vanessa... I wasn't at the Vale of Eden. I haven't left this apartment all day. Now, I don't know what you're getting at with this accusation, but I think you better leave. Oh, Miss Case. Oh, Miss Case, you look wonderful. How do you feel? Fine, but... Yes? Well, frankly, I felt fine before the treatment, too. So I really can't see any difference. Oh, you will. You will in time. You'll see a big difference. Oh. Well, thank you, Mr. Eden. Now I really must go. Miss Case, aren't you forgetting something? Yes. Oh, of course. How stupid of me. Thank you, Mr. Eden, so much. Goodbye. Thank you. Vanessa Vane? I don't believe it, Britt. That's incredible. Incredible. I don't know what's happening to the good people of this city. Do you know in the last two months, three of our outstanding citizens have been involved in rackets of some sort? Harvey Wicks, embezzlement. George Foster Matson, grand theft and bunco. Hamilton Bartlett and fraud. And now Vanessa. Not to mention Oliver the jeweler. He even denies that Vanessa was in his store. They all say the same thing. They all claim they have no memory of committing a crime. 
Frank, I think I know about Andrew, those people. I want you to listen to something. You too, Cato. Thanks. <laughs> what, music? That's at normal speed. Now listen to what happens when I turn the speed down to where the tape is barely moving. When you get the money, you will bring it to me. You will not remember any of the instructions I have given you. What is it? You know what Professor Wiley was working on? Motivational research. And he had made a significant breakthrough in the field of motivational technique. You've heard of subliminal suggestion? Mm -hmm. You mean where words are flashed so fast on the screen a person can see them? Only you do see them, Cato. Not with the eye, but with the brain. Professor Wiley took that principle, applied it to the spoken word, perfected this. A method of giving verbal instructions so rapidly that they bypass the auditory senses and are picked up only by the subconscious mind, a sort of silent brainwashing. Where did you get this tape? The Vale of Eden. The Vale of Eden? Somehow Eden got a hold of Professor Wiley's technique and is using it for his own purposes. Frank, I think you'll find that Harvey Wicks, George Forster Matson, Desmond Oliver, and Vanessa Vane all have something in common. They're all patrons of the Vale of Eden. And Peter Eden programmed them to commit these crimes for his own benefit. Miss Case, how was it at the Vale of Eden? Just fine. You were doing what you were programmed to do. Eden evidently found out we were on to him and tried to get rid of him. I don't remember anything. You're not supposed to. That's the name of the game. Well, I'm going to put an end to it right now. How, Frank? You can have Eden arrested, but what have you got to prosecute him with? People like Casey and Vanessa Vane don't even know they've been programmed. Harriet Dennis in the hospital. We don't even know whether she'll live, and if she does live, we don't know what she'll say. I'm afraid you're right. And that tape certainly isn't admissible as evidence. Give me some time, Frank. I'll have you all the evidence you'll need. The Green Hornet's gonna have a little business conference with Peter Eden. <laughs> 